it is finally time for another Dragon Ball discussion, and this time we're not doing a review, we're not doing a countdown. This is an actual discussion this time, and we're doing this because on March 18th, which we're recording this on the, on the 22nd, so this past Saturday was Saiyan Day, 318, and it was a big day for Dragon Ball in Japan. Um, and so we figured we wanted to do a discussion before then or around then, but we literally could not get our schedules to align properly. So this is our Saiyan Day uh, discussion here, and it was brought up by Dave himself, which of course you can already know by if you've watched this series, he's with me. Um, so his topic for us this week is what if Frieza never destroyed planet Vegeta and the Saiyans were allowed to keep doing what they were doing which keep in mind was being Frieza's servants I think a lot of things would have happened actually and I say a lot of things or more accurately a lot of things would have not happened first I don't think anyone would have unlocked the power of the Super Saiyan I don't, don't think, think so? That, I don't think so. Bardock was getting stronger, but I don't think that there would have been any situation where a Super Saiyan would have emerged. Like, you gotta remember at the time, too, the Saiyan race, they used their tails. They kept their tails. And so the Azuru form was enough, basically. That's true. So they probably would have just relied on that and remember like with the Saiyan Saga Vegeta knew how to make a fake moon I'm sure he wasn't the only Saiyan that knew how to do that After all the great scientist Bardock <laughs> You know he he invented that because he was a great scientist Until except he the wasn't. special came out <laughs> Except he wasn't He but, was just um, a grunt But I think the Zero form would have probably you know, been what they would have stuck with, and they probably wouldn't have had a need to go Super Saiyan. And Don't you honestly, think that with, with the Zenkai boost, that especially if assuming Bardock continues to fight, right? Um, so it's also a scenario because I feel like Frieza's destruction of Vegeta um, was only brought to the attention of everyone by Bardock's psychic powers he got. So is this also a timeline where he didn't get those? That basically would have been it. He never would have gotten that vision because Frieza had no intention of destroying Vegeta. Yeah, unless, so... unless Beerus decided to eventually, but I don't think he wouldn't necessarily have done that either because Beerus sleeps a lot, he forgets shit, or even if he didn't forget it necessarily, it would have happened so much later in the timeline that... There's, there's a good chance that all of our characters wouldn't be have been around anymore. anyway. Yeah. Um, so I, I disagree with the non discovery of, of a Super Saiyan because I think that, like, let's use this timeline, right? So Goku's on Earth. Um, he's going to stay on Earth for a while. So we're just starting from the history of Bardock. Uh, I think that Bardock and everyone continues to be under uh, Frieza's rule. Bardock's squad is never killed by Dodoria. But the Saiyans, especially Bardock himself, are still, they're not happy about being under Frieza's rule. So as they, they fight more and more battles, uh, Bardock in particular starts to really get Zenkai boosts. Um, because he, uh, to a certain point, would be the guy who's experienced near death more than anybody else. So, so Bardock starts to receive Zenkai boosts, where I think that... It, it'd be feasible that he would lead the rebellion for the Saiyans to try and take out Vegeta. Um, and then I think you have the fight with Dodoya where his squad's wiped out in front of him. But I do think that they would have gotten uh, so closer to each other during this time frame of training to fight Frieza that I do think that Bardock is the one who becomes the legendary Super Saiyan. Now, if we also take into consideration that weird side story Bardock got that was like, he didn't die, he got sent back in time. Bardock is destined, if he had survived, destined to become a Super Saiyan because we know that the legendary Super Saiyan, canon or not, is supposedly Broly. 
And considering that that's coming into Dragon Ball Super, it's safe to assume that it's actually more of a, a canon thing to the series now, is that that is the legendary Super Saiyan. So this is a regular Super Saiyan. This is achievable by any member of the Saiyan race or halfling or what what have you all it takes is for them to get really really mad and i think instead of you know, bardock didn't witness his squad get slaughtered by the doria but i think in this timeline if he did he would become a super saiyan well the thing is the thing is you have to remember if the saiyans did rebel that would just cause frieza to destroy vegeta anyway well, so not, if, was, not if they well, rebelled not if the, first not if by the only Saiyans fighting won. the Doria. Um, like if if, it, if like the Doria was with them and they ambushed the Doria, but he started beating the shit out of them, killing them, and then Bardock goes Super Saiyan. Then even if Frieza, well, first Bardock would probably make a beeline straight for Frieza. There'd be no time for him to go to Planet Vegeta. No, yeah, probably. Probably. So I think in this timeline, let's just say for argument's sake, in my version of this timeline, Bardock becomes Super Saiyan, he kills Adoria, goes straight to whatever planet Frieza's currently at, he kills Arbon, he, he destroys the Ginyu Force, and confronts Frieza himself. So... This is a long battle, like it is with Goku, but the legendary Super Saiyan form is simply... It's stronger than Frieza could ever hope to be without going golden form. Frieza dies by the hands of Bardock. So in this timeline, the Saiyans, led now led by Bardock over King Vegeta because he's become a Super Saiyan, they're the ones who start to take over the universe. Hmm. Which then brings the attention of Beerus when he wakes up. And then I do think no matter what timeline you're in, at some stage, most of the Saiyans are wiped out. Yeah, Beerus would have definitely killed off the rest of the Saiyans if he remembers to. Yeah, so if he wakes up and Whis tells him, oh, the Saiyans rebelled against Frieza, killed him, and now they're running amok across the universe, uh, Beerus would intervene. Yeah, uh, and... So, let's say, for example, let's take Beerus out of the equation. Let's talk about, let's talk about the same timeline, but before the introduction of Beerus and all them. What would have happened with Goku? What would have happened with Goku? Would he have become so much stronger because there were more Saiyans for him to fight? Or well, also, they would also have to pick him up. Right, so they, they would have to go to Earth, and I do think Earth would have to fall under the Saiyan's rule. Because Goku would not be able to stand up to them. Right. I actually think Goku would probably be killed. Goku would probably end up being killed because, remember... Well, how, Go how far into the timeline are, are we assuming the Saiyans land on Earth? Well, we're, we're assuming that by, by around the time, you know, like, like the time Raditz would have gotten to Earth. Okay, because I, I assumed it would have been much sooner than that. I, I would assume that um, with if, let's say they kill Frieza within five years, then Bardock goes to get his son with Raditz. And they uh, go to Earth, and they find Goku as a kid. Now, he still hit his head. He still doesn't remember his mission. However, they wouldn't have to kill him to bring him back with them and reintroduce him to Saiyan training. That's possible, but I, I just I, I'm thinking in terms of like what Saiyans actually do because remember Saiyans tend to leave their children on the planet to take over the planet and by the time they're an adult You know, they're capable of taking over the planet on their own So I figured they would have ex they would have waited until around that time where Goku should have taken over the planet by then to then check on Goku and then decide to take him back Right, so in, in that regard, let's say they show up then, Saiyan Saga, Bardock shows up with Raditz. Yeah. They fight, so Goku and Piccolo team up, this is now a two-on-two -two fight, however, the one thing Bardock has that Goku does not is the ability to go Super Saiyan. Yeah, Goku would be way weak by this Go point. Goku and Piccolo would be heavily outmatched. Piccolo killed definitively 
I'd say they beat Goku to near death. And instead of taking Goku, I think they they still take Gohan with them. They leave Goku to die. I think that's what would happen too. I think Goku because Goku at this point he's like, I mean obviously in the Japanese version it's still like, oh I still want to find the best fighters or whatever. But he still is a good guy at this point, and I don't think he would be so easily swayed to just you know we're gonna go kill people and take over planets. I don't think he would have been swayed. And no, now if so, they had showed up, if they had showed up during Dragon Ball, like the before Bulma showed up, they'd have a chance. They would, be, they would have a much greater chance. And you got to remember too that Toriyama said Saiyans don't have that bond to family. Like, only, yeah, that's right. Only the royal family does. Only the royal family does. So Bardock and Raditz would probably have no trouble to say, you know what, Goku sucks or Kakarot sucks. Let's fucking kill him and be done with it. That's true. Although, if we're also considering that, Bardock seemed to be an exception to this rule because he had a close relationship with Gein. His wife. That's true. That's true. But the question is, how far does that extend? Well, I, Gein was a very kind... From what we've seen of Gein, we haven't seen that much. Or, or Gein. I, I think it's Gein because of how the Japanese alphabet's pronounced. But So... Would Gain want her son killed? Because she was a very kind-hearted Saiyan. That's how she swayed Bardock over to begin with. That's true. But what about if someone openly defied him? That's where the question comes into play. Like, would the request of his wife come before, you know, Goku's birthright as a Saiyan to be a conqueror? Yeah, that's true. That's and Saiyans, you know, their number one thing is to be fighters and to take over planets. And if Goku actively defied Bardock and you know actively went against his Saiyan heritage, and this is I, assuming that like, also, are, are you going by my timeline of events or your own timeline of events where Bardock is upsees the royal family? I'm going by like the one, the one I'm still talking about, where like. Ignoring Beerus and all them, and like okay. this is Saiyan Saga. Okay. You know, because by this point, Goku is is heavily swayed into the idea that he is an Earthling. That's that's true. You know, Goku doesn't think of himself as a Saiyan. He doesn't know what Saiyans are until they introduce themselves to him. So, I think Goku would try to fight them, and Saiyans, being you know the warriors that they are, they believe there's no more honor than honor and death. You know, so they so would they, probably they just, figure they kill Goku and move on. Do, I think do they, they destroy would... Earth or do they take it themselves? Like, does Raditz now get appointed to Earth? I think that they would probably take it over. Although I don't know, I don't know honestly. That's a good question because I feel like they would try to take it over, and then you have like the rest of the Z fighters at the time would probably all be killed off. Oh, they, they would die very quickly. They would all be killed off, like, one by one. And they would enslave Bulma's family to advance their technology. Like, imagine the Saiyans traveling across the universe with Capsule Corp technology. That would be scary as shit. I think that would be the main reason why they wouldn't destroy Earth, but I do believe... I think that they would, in that scenario, they would enslave Earth. Bardock and Raditz would just go ahead and do the job uh, Kakarot was supposed to do. Yeah, that's probably what would happen. It would be a very different timeline. It would be a very different timeline. But I definitely think Goku dies. All of the Z Fighters and Master Roshi die. Oh, yeah. Um, um, there, there's no one who can oppose Bardock and Raditz. So let, let's just say, for argument's sake, because I think there's not much left to do in this discussion. There's only a couple other aspects that uh, I, I would well, like to bring up. So let's just say that... So, if we're going by your timeline, where everything on Earth happens the same up unto the Saiyan Saga. So, Goku still has assaulted and destroyed most of the Red Ribbon Army. Which means that Dr. Zero has continued his creation and research into the cyborgs. So, how do uh, cyborgs 17 and 18, how do they fit into this timeline because in theory they would be strong enough to kill the saiyans that's actually very true and then there's the other uh, there's the other prospect 
Majin Piccolo, Buu. Piccolo oh. and Kami. Well, Pic if Piccolo dies. I'd say Piccolo dies during the fight with Raditz and Bardock. So there are no Dragon Balls. That's true. Majin Buu, I think... I don't think... I don't know if Majin Buu would necessarily be resurrected. Like, they... Remember, he was he was very well hidden until Bobby decided to resurrect him. Unless Bobby like came during that point and like within and from the shadows did everything. Yeah, like like that would require Bobby to show up. I don't think I don't necessarily think like Majin Buu would have been resurrected. I, I do point. think that the the androids or the cyborgs they're appearance would likely Jiro would have sent the androids after the Saiyans yeah he um, would well because it's his home too and also he he might mistake Bardock for Goku that's true that's true he would send them after after the uh Saiyans just because of that so in this universe is Dr. Jiro and, and the androids do they become the good guys that's actually a really good point <laughs> because they would kill the saiyans likely resulting in the destruction of earth however well well i think what they would do is jiro would have had the androids kill the saiyans and then the say then the androids would kill jiro or they would kill jiro first a future trunks-esque timeline with no one with no one in their way and, but I do think that, let's say, the Saiyans find out Bardock and Raditz are dead. Um, I do. I would see them launching a full-scale attack on Earth and likely just destroying it. That's very well a possibility. So I, I think that like no matter what timeline we go into, Earth is either enslaved by the Saiyans or destroyed by the Saiyans. Yeah. I don't. I can't think of a scenario where Earth makes it. Well, Earth is fucked regardless. Is pretty much the point. Yeah. Earth yeah. is completely fucked regardless because either the, either the Saiyans destroy it, enslave everybody, or the androids come out and they kill everybody. Yeah. Well, because you gotta remember, too, the androids would have been strong enough to be able to deflect Saiyan attacks and shit. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're strong enough to destroy... Um... Well, because you gotta remember, Bardock would be the only Super Saiyan by this point. Well, us, uh, maybe. Potentially. Potentially, he'd be the strongest Super Saiyan, possibly even a Super Saiyan Grade Two, which is like the Super Vegeta yeah. uh, Ultra Trunks. Yeah, that's true. I think the Saiyans would have been weaker though because of it, because um, by this point they would have nobody left to challenge them, so they would have no way to get stronger on their own unless they just started challenging each other. Yeah. Oh, which is actually. Possible. Actually, this brings up another good point. Civil War. Because obviously the royal family is not going to be too thrilled that Bardock basically took over. Oh, fuck. Vegeta would gather Nappa and Vegeta a, would a whole get, other get, gang of guys. Vegeta probably would have sent a Super Saiyan. King Vegeta would still be alive because remember, Frieza was the one that killed him. That's Unless right. Bardock killed him too. But, uh, you know... That would have that would have led to a full scale civil war, and maybe now that we're thinking about, it, let's say they ended up killing Frieza, right? They killed mm -hmm. Frieza. Let's say this civil war happens long before they even get to Earth, and because of this civil war is so bad, most of the Saiyans are wiped out anyway because of the casualties of war. So who lives? Who wins? Well. I think Vegeta, like Vegeta Jr., uh, his his natural fighting prowess. If he, assuming he ascends to Super Saiyan to face Bardock, because that would be the climactic battle, right? Vegeta I would versus say, Bardock. I actually would say Bardock would win, and here's why: Vegeta is more calculating. He's more strategic. Bardock throws himself in the face of danger, knowing that he gets stronger. He also has the psychic ability. Exactly. He also has that psychic ability, so he just has way too many advantages. He wouldn't. He would probably get himself hurt on purpose to get a and just high. boost himself up and boost himself up and boost himself up until basically no one can stop him. So, 
Plenty of Vegeta either ends up getting destroyed or halfway wiped out because of Civil War. So that they don't ascend to replace um, Frieza's empire, they, they remain self-contained. Maybe, maybe the and under this this era, the rem, the last remaining Saiyans simply become like goons for hire, like yeah, or like a mercenary squad or something like that. Yeah, which that would actually be kind of cool. And then that would get like let's say Bardock did win, and there was only a handful of Saiyans left. That would give them the reason to go to Earth to get Goku. That's true. Because you go wait, I know one Saiyan who's not here. Yeah. That would give them the reason... Because remember, that's why Raditz went there in the first place. Was because they needed the numbers. So... Yeah, that would sent give, Raditz to recruit Goku. Yeah. So, that would give them the reason to go get Goku. And then that would lead to the whole situation with Earth. Maybe if Vegeta is so damaged beyond repair, the remaining Saiyans colonize Earth. And turn that into their home planet. Still enslaving... Humanity and Capsule Corp to yeah. significantly advance their technology. Yeah, and then that would lead to Jiro and the Androids. Unless, who knows? What if the, the Saiyans could end up coming to an agreement with Jiro? That's true. Because Jiro only cares if, about... If they this, present Goku to Jiro... Or, honestly, because Jiro looks for opportunities to display how great of a scientist he is. So That's if they true. say, hey, we'll give you the funds, you give us the technology, we'll even give we'll even take over Capsule Corp so they can't compete with you. And and then give Jiro access to Cap Capsule Corp's technology and their department. It's a dream scenario for him. It's a perfect scenario for him. And then who the fuck knows what would happen? You know? Maybe Jiro would agree with it to a point, but become so ambitious that he decides to turn on Bardock, and that's when his androids get unleashed? Or, even crazier, this continues for a long time. Now, we know Saiyans live stupid long. So, Over. But this, this continues for a long time, and instead of going straight to the androids, Jiro immediately moves to Cell. I was thinking the exact same thing. So he basically gets the cell of all of the Saiyan warriors. Then Cell is basically pure Saiyan at that point. Yeah, he would he would have some Piccolo cells because Piccolo was picked up on well before because yeah. like Cell was in progress be even before the Saiyan saga. Yeah, he was in progress during the um, TN Goku finals of the Tenkaichi. Yeah. So, I think Perfect Cell comes out, and I think he ends up being the winner of this timeline. Yeah. Because there's no fucking way they could beat him. There's no way. I mean, unless Cell was merely weakened due to the fact that it wasn't a stronger batch of warriors, that's the only possible way that he would lose. Which I just don't see happening, because even even without the cells of Vegeta and Frieza, they would have yeah. so many cells off all these obviously strong, probably Super Saiyan level Saiyans that inhabited Earth. Yeah, definitely. Um, I I honestly think though, like this leads to so many opportunities for like crazy ass things to happen in the timeline. It's fascinating to think about. Yeah, I think in this particular scenario, um, either the android, we either get a future Trunks esque timeline with the androids, which leads to Cell anyway. All these roads lead to Cell. Yeah. If if they if they don't go to Earth until the Saiyan Saga, then they get wiped out by Cell. If they go to Earth during Dragon Ball and either enslave or destroy Earth, then they win. So it, it depends on when they go to Earth. If they go, to, if they wait for the Saiyan Saga, then the Saiyans get wiped out anyway, completely. There's no survivors this time. Cell wipes them out, takes over the universe. Actually, actually, that's when Bobbity comes in. You think so? That's when Bobbity would come sneaking in to try and get Boo. He would take the energy from the fucking casualties of the Saiyans trying to fight Cell. So, so then we get Cell versus Boo. Then you get Cell versus Boo. 
So either way, nobody really wins. Nobody only the, wins. Only the villains. Nobody only wins. The villains. But that would be a dope fucking timeline. So in a way, Frieza destroying Planet Vegeta is one of the most crucial events in all of Dragon Ball. And if you, if that doesn't happen, so many things go wrong. Pretty much. I mean, yeah. Basically, like, Earth would be doomed. Earth would be doomed. Our heroes would be doomed. No matter what scenario. Because in this scenario, Bardock would be a villain. So no matter what scenario it is, every villain wins. The heroes, yeah. our heroes on Earth don't stand a chance. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So that is going to wrap up this Dragon Ball discussion. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll try and think of another good topic for next week. And on behalf of Dave and myself, thanks for listening, and we will see you next time.